Hey, I'm Chris and welcome back to my channel. I'm here with my 1961 DeSoto and this car was made during the brand's final year of production. The DeSoto Car Company ran for 34 years starting in 1928 through 1961 and it was conceived as a competitor to Mercury and Oldsmobile. DeSoto was named after the Spanish conquistador Hernando DeSoto and it was an obvious take on his play as an explorer. So not only was this car produced during the final year of DeSoto production, but 1961 was also the final year of the forward look design theme. You see, the forward look was a design concept created by Virgil Exner, who was Chrysler's head of design at that time, and it ran from a period of 1955 through 1961. The forward look is characterized by low roofs and sweeping fins and an organic nature to its design. Also, the forward look was a dramatic departure from what Chrysler was producing and creating prior to this period. By 1957, the third year of the forward look era, styling hit a pinnacle in simplicity and pureness. And it was so revolutionary, so hot, so new, so fresh, that the automotive world was on fire with it, and it was the style leader for that year. But by 1961, the styling evolution became wild and outrageous and outlandish with the candid headlights and the double grille and the questionable body side treatment and the wild fins. Also, by 1961, fins as a styling feature had already become outdated and passe and the automotive design of that time had moved on and it moved on to an angular and square look much like the 61 Lincoln. So styling is the most obvious feature of this car but there are so many other unusual and interesting features as well starting with the front suspension. You see in 1957 Chrysler abandoned the typical coil spring front suspension in favor of the latest suspension technology at that time the torsion bar. You see one end of the torsion bar is solidly mounted to the framing of the car right behind the transmission while the other end of the torsion bar mounts to the lower control arm. The vertical movement of the front wheel causes the bar to twist creating resistance and thus the spring effect. In fact torsion air ride was so advanced and so superior the entire Chrysler lineup including Plymouth, Dodge, DeSoto, Chrysler and Imperial were all named the Motor Trend Car of the Year in 1957. Even though the torsion bar front suspension was introduced in 57 it was so good and so advanced that Chrysler continued it through 1989. In fact, Chrysler was so proud of their front suspension design, they produced a promotional video comparing their 1958 car lineup to that of the competition. The first two cars over this course will demonstrate how the lower price cars take this pounding. The Windsor is pacing the Mercury at 40 miles an hour. Here is the same run in slow motion. Two cameras have been used to record this series of tests. This way, the results can be seen both in regular and slow motion. The torture road, as you can see, has been built to put cars through the severest kind of punishment. Now in slow motion, you can see how these cars are punished as they hit the ramps and bounce into the air. Often with all four wheels off the ground, and then come crashing down with a jolt that would knock the teeth out of a curry cone. These ramps are designed to twist and throw the cars to the side, as well as up and down. See how the Oldsmobile pitches, and it's difficult to control as it hits these bumps. The Windsor hits and recovers almost instantly, and with ease. Here we see the Windsor and the Buick Super in action. Look at the difference. Now the same run in slow motion. And incidentally, this is the same Windsor that ran the first two tests. Remember, the Chrysler products travel this course again and again and again. Remember, this is as tough a test as you'll ever see. But one, you would expect two quality cars to pass with ease. Incidentally, both rear shock absorber mounting brackets on the Cadillac have been torn loose from the frame. The Imperial with torsion air has taken the torture run for the second time and is ready to go again. Without a doubt, no other ride can compare with torsion air for safety, for comfort, for dependability. Where all the Chrysler products excelled in their suspension design, well, they failed in their brakes. You see, power brakes on this car was an option. But when selected, the brake booster gets seated directly above the master cylinder. It created all kinds of questions as to how to check the fluid or flush the fluid or refill the brake master cylinder reservoir. And then it's the brakes themselves. You see, this car has drum brakes on all four corners and the friction material on these brakes are inside this drum. And the inherent problem with the design is that there simply isn't enough airflow to keep the brakes cool. 
So on the car with drum brakes, these are the brake shoes. When you press the brake pedal, they expand, they push against the inside of the drum, and that's what slows the car. Also, on these forward look cars, there's no self-adjusters. That means after a while of driving, the car will start pulling one way or the other when you hit the brakes. At that point, you need to get out, get underneath the car, adjust the adjusters, and sync up the brakes on each side so it stops straight and consistent each time. So let's look at the interior next. This car has the optional parking brake warning light that illuminates when the parking brake is applied. It's this giant red glaring light that's so big and so obvious that it's impossible to miss. It also has a translucent speedometer panel that gets illuminated during the day through natural sunlight, which is pretty cool. It has an optional padded dash for that extra level of safety in the collision. And then the icing on the cake, push buttons. Push buttons for the heating and ventilation and push buttons for the transmission selector. This is a full 55 years before the transmission button selector is used in some of today's cars. The horn is big, loud, and obnoxious, just like the car. And then you have these two lights on the dash, and it would make sense that they're for your turn signal. But when you use your turn signal, you realize that only one light is for the left and the right turn, while the other light is for your high beams. And then there's a full set of gauges, including an amp, fuel, water temperature, and an oil pressure monitor light. And finally, I think one of the coolest features of this car isn't what you see or necessarily what you feel when you're driving. I think one of the coolest features is what the marketing guys came up with to help sell these when they were new. You see those squanky cats? They came up with all kinds of super cool names for every feature of the car. These fins? They're rear stabilizers. The headlights? Twin set headlights. Rear suspension? Gyro ride. The transmission selector? Well, that's push-button torque flight control. The front suspension? Torsion air ride. And the list goes on and on and on with constant control power steering and center plane total contact brakes and Jiffy Jet windshield washer fluid too. So there you go, that's my DeSoto. Does any of this mean I don't like this car? Absolutely not, I love this car. This is my most favorite vintage car ever. All the weird and wacky and craziness going on with it. But would you drive it? Is this too wild, outlandish, too out there for you? Also, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. And if you didn't like this video, well, leave me some constructive feedback in the comment section. If you haven't subscribed already, be sure to do that. And as always, thanks for watching. <laughs>